Hello, my name is Amanda Fountain, and today I will be lecturing over the different types of shock and signs and symptoms. In addition, I will explain how we as EMS providers treat and manage patients who are or may be experience shock, experiencing shock in the field. There are many different types of shock we may face. For instance, hypovolemic shock. This is the most common type of shock and based on insufficient circulating volume. Its primary cause is loss of fluid from the circulation, most often hemorrhagic shock. Causes may include internal bleeding, traumatic bleeding, or severe burns. Another type of shock that we may face is cardiogenic shock. This type of shock is caused by the failure of the heart to pump effectively. This can be due to damage of the heart muscle, most often from a large myocardial infarction. Other causes of cardiogenic shock include arrhythmias, maybe congestive heart failure, or even cardiac valve problems. We may experience a shock that's distributive shock. As in hypovolemic shock, there is an insufficient intervascular volume of blood. This form of relative hypovolemia is the result of dilation of blood vessels, which diminishes systematic vascular resistance. Examples of this form of shock are septic shock, caused by an overwhelming systematic infection, resulting in vasodilation, leading to hypotension. Septic shock also includes some elements, elements of cardiogenic shock. In 1992, the Consensus Conference Committee defined septic shock as sepsis-induced hypotension. It's a systolic blood pressure below 90, or a reduction of 40 from a baseline blood pressure. Despite adequate fluid resuscitation, along with the presence of perfusion abnormalities, that may include, but are not limited to, lactic acidosis or an acute alteration in mental status. Another distributive shock would be anaphylactic shock. It's caused by a severe allergic reaction to an allergen or a drug or maybe a foreign protein, causing the release of histamines, which causes widespread vasodilation. This leads to hypotension and increased capillary permeability, which lowers the blood pressure more. Another would be neurogenic shock. Neurogenic shock is the rarest form of shock. It is caused by trauma to the spinal cord, resulting in the sudden loss of autonomic and motor reflexes below the injury level. Without stimulation by sympathetic nervous system, the vessel walls relax uncontrollably resulting in sudden decrease in peripheral vascular resistance, leading to vasodilation and hypotension. This term can be confused with spinal shock, which is recoverable loss of function of the spinal cord after injury and does not refer to the hemodynamic instability per se. Another form of shock is obstructive shock. This can consist of a cardiac tamponade. Cardiac tamponade is when the fluid in the pericardium prevents inflow of blood into the heart, venous return, which shrinks and hardens and is similar in presentation, is the constrictive pericardiotesis. Another would be tension pneumothorax. Through the increased interthoracic pressure, blood flow to the heart is prevented, the venous return. Last but not least is the massive pulmonary embolism. This is a result of a thromboembolic incident in the blood vessels of the lungs and hinders the return of blood to the heart. All of these may have similar signs or different signs. It just depends on how your patient presents. Um, some of the symptoms that we can see with different types of shock. Um, some are similar and some are different, but we can go over some of the symptoms of a neuro, um, a spinal injury. It can slow the heart rate, warm skin due to dilation of the peripheral blood vessels. Um, anaphylactic, 
maybe a bee sting, hives, edema of the arms, legs, and allergy, weak rapid pulse, cough, narrowing of airways, or swelling in the throat. Cardiogenic, you could see distended jugular veins, um, could be a CHF, weak absent pulse, arrhythmia, tachycardia. And the septic shock could be from a surgery, a temperature change, you have shortness of breath, intense vasodilation, hypotension, Hypovolemic shock, um, an MVA, hemorrhage, vomiting, diarrhea, rapid weak pulse, rapid shallow breathing, insufficient circulating volume, maybe your patient says that they are thirsty, uh, mottled skin, hypothermia. There are a lot of different signs and symptoms to determine whether or not your patient is in shock or maybe soon to be in shock. Um, let's see. Shortly after the patient enters decompensated shock, the cells die, tissues dysfunction, organs dysfunction, and the patient dies. This is known as, can anyone tell me what this can be known as as far as shock related? It's going to be an irreversible shock which means the body, the organs have shut down, the body has shut down, and there's just no way to come back from, from where the body is at this point. Um, let's go over some treatments of shock. Um, once you have seen your patient, you know, you know kind of where, where they stand um, to prevent or if they are already in shock, these are some of the things that we can do. Um, treatments could be keeping the patient warm and comfortable whether you are burning up in the ambulance or not you still want to put it at a temperature that's going to keep your patient warm um, so cover them up with a blanket you can elevate their feet and maintain an open airway uh, be CPR ready just in case the need comes and you know that's something that that you need to to be ready for um, manage any injury causing the shock. If it's bleeding, you know, manage the bleeding site. Whatever needs to be done to minimize the shock itself. Um, an immediate trans transport as soon as you can. Make sure that, you know, you get your patient to the hospital as fast as you can so that they can be treated for whatever it is that may be causing the situation. I do have a PowerPoint that we can go over and just to kind of show you some slides breaking down each one of the shocks and treatments and everything as well other than just this lecture and what we've went over and a handout that you can reference. See. And you want to make sure that you do apply oxygen to your patient. Um, you may need to give fluids to maintain the blood pressure of over 90. Um, again, like I said, you know, keep them warm, elevate the feet. There's not a whole lot that we can do, but at least we can sort of manage the situation and minimize as much as we can. Let's see. Um, shock is a life-threatening condition that usually results from severe psychological stress. Shock occurs when the body is not getting enough blood flow. Um, recognizing shock and treating it correctly may help save a life. Um, it's just a matter of treating your patient, watching your patient, making sure um, a lot of, most of the tell, tall tell signs are gonna be pale, and, pale, cool, and clammy skin. I mean, if your patient just looks like they just they just don't feel well, you know, or they just don't look right. Um, you know, maybe they've been in a car wreck. Maybe they have internal bleeding. There's so many things that we cannot see, but at least we know that if we look at it from a standpoint of may they may be in shock, 
it doesn't hurt to treat them for it. It's not going to hurt them to be covered up with a blanket. It's not going to hurt them, you know, for us to elevate their feet. Whatever we need to do to minimize anything that the patient feels and make them comfortable, at least on the way for transport. Um, and again, immediate transport is can basically save a life. So as as best as we can. Um, next, I would like to go over 